All right, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Cam Capone News. Your boy, all right, we have a very special guest here, Mr. Santana. Hey, what's going on with you, good fella? How are you? Everything's good. Everything's good. I cannot complain, man. Thank thank you. First off, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so good. Thank you for having me, man. Huge. I wouldn't say huge. I'm, I'm young, so a lot of this was a beautiful, rich experience for me, uh-huh. doing research on you and just kind of learning about the history. Uh-huh. Uh, you, the collective, uh-huh. and uh, a little a little history lesson on hip hop as well. Like uh-huh. so, like I said, this is thank you for for taking the time to do this. But it's so good. How old are you? If you don't mind, I'm 24. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. young young fella. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I do want to take it back because, like I said, you know. A lot of the kids my age are kind of naive to Harlem's impact on the culture and as well as Dipset impact on the culture. So if you could kind of just take us back and walk us through, you know, what was the world like around that time in the, the 1900s? It was a beautiful time, man. You know, at the end of the day, just like any other time, a lot going on, just like nowadays, it's just like, Nowadays, I feel like they they starting maybe a little bit more younger. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and with the access to the internet and, and things of that nature, it's like you know everything is moving a lot more faster. But besides that, you know, pretty much kind of a lot of the same things. But you know, just our mentalities, I think, were a little bit different. Our drives, our visions, you know, what I mean, things mm-hmm. that we were striving for. You know what I'm saying? Um, such as money was a was a big thing. And I think everybody strives for money too. But you know, uh, you know, a lot of this shit nowadays is, is more or less just like getting busy and, and, and getting to it. You know what I'm saying? That that real, I don't give a fuck attitude and stage that the kids. We're not gonna say kids or your youngins is at in their life, and we all been been through that point. Like I say, man, I always like to preach. You know what I'm saying? Like positive and, and, and good energy and like you know I hope they stay out the way and you know I'm saying chase their dreams like for sure but at the end of the day like I always say too you know they they kind of at that age in life where they they really don't give a fuck you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying it's not is that what you mean when you say like the mindset is different yeah yeah, that, yeah. that's the no, mindset no no I mean I mean I, at that age I have okay. the same mindset that's what I'm saying we uh-huh. all go through that thing I think everybody unless Maybe only five percent of the world has a, a a stage in life where they never experienced that. I don't give a fuck stage in life. But mm-hmm. besides that, I think our early twenties, I mean late teens, early twenties is like that. I don't give a fuck stage in life. You don't really want to hear too much what nobody can tell you. It's pretty much you got to learn everything the hard way. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you know, and I just think that's that's a lot of what's going on right now. You know? Yeah, that's interesting. You brought that up because. Like, I'm on record saying uh, a lot of the kids these days, because they get to grow up on the screen and the social media, mm-hmm. they get punished for that, their actions, because it, it, everything is lived online. Yeah. Y'all y'all had the privilege of doing the bullshit <laughs> and, you know, didn't have to see it the next day online, and oh, the, yeah. world get, the world's also living it with y'all, so. No, 100%. I used to say, um, I used to think, it was harder to to survive in our area, but I feel like in some ways it it was, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways it was. But in a lot of ways for us, it's kind of harder in this area because it's like you're right. We didn't have to live under this microscope of everything you did, having to read about it. And I'm saying we did what the fuck we wanted to did and do and certain things we didn't even we didn't even see. And I'm saying we didn't have to worry about people commenting and or people trying to cancel you or, or certain certain things out there that's going on when it comes to social media. So, you know, it is a, 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 a real finicky time for, you know, just music in general and just entertainment in general, I should say, overall. But it's also a great time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot more money, a lot more revenue with the streams and stuff like that. And, you know, these artists are bigger than ever. You understand what I'm saying? So... You know, I, I always say life is life is what you make it, mm. and everything in life has pros and cons, positives and negatives, everything. So the internet comes with its pros and cons, you know what I'm saying? 
just like everything else. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? See, I heard you said on a, on another interview, you were speaking about the the, the impact of Harlem. Yeah. You was touching on that. And the like, impact of Harlem is so especially legendary. On, on black culture specifically, because yeah. you, you mentioned like the on American the gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like. Look, it, it, it's no other spot. Forget in New York. Mm -hmm. And with North New York being kind of like the mecca of what we call America, really. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I, I think so. You know I mean, in a lot of ways, but Harlem. How many how many places have you had movies done in one area? Mm. Harlem, like I said, we got American Gangsters done in Harlem. Fucking Malcolm paid X. in full. Malcolm X. Fucking Sugar Hill. Who? Fucking New Jack City. All of these were stories based on Harlem and, and stories based on relatively true, you know, mm -hmm. actions of people that, you know what I mean? The Nicky Bonds, you know, all the, all these shits was like real. You understand what I'm saying? This is a, this is a borough in New York City. You understand what I'm saying? So, which was just rich, real rich in culture and history and just, even before my time, just a little bit before my time, just coming up, even watching as a kid, Harlem, it was like, it was at one point you had to come to Harlem to to get some. You know what I'm saying? What are you, like what? Drugs. I mean, everything wasn't spread out. Like, we had the best everything, clothes. You mm -hmm. had to come, like, 145th Street, 125th Street. Those were, like, the shopping areas. You understand what I'm saying? All your biggest rappers, artists, I mean, came to 45th Street to shop. Um, drugs, that was a big big thing people would come to you know broadway jay-z said it i'm a ceo of the coke on broadway you know what i mean that's probably before you ever too like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? but like just harlem is very rich in just culture and that's how it was for for a time it was like you had to if, even if you lived in new york you had to come to harlem for something mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. do you now that you know you look at it now do you think it has changed for the better or do you think it's changed for the worse I um, mean, I love Harlem, and, you know, I definitely don't think it's changed for the better, just with all the gentrification, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and a, and a lot of the things, I definitely think it's, it's lost some of the, the culture that, that, but, you know, some things would just never change. Mm -hmm. some, you can't erase history at the end of the day. I mean, you can't erase the things that, that occurred and the things that took place. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what made makes and made Harlem Harlem, but, you know, a lot of things change just in the city, general boroughs, and you know, gentrification has a big, big part of it. And like I said, everything has its negatives and its positives. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just try to take life as it comes. Certain things that's outside of my control, I I, I learn not to. I mean, you learn this when you're in jail. Wow. Don't worry about what you can't control. That's what the old 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 OGs tell you in jail. First thing, cause you in jail. Yeah. You can't worry about the outside world now. You know what I'm saying? So you really got to take on that mentality when you when you locked up. Like, when you was outside your control, don't worry about it. Don't worry about because you'll be in jail going crazy trying to worry about what motherfuckers are doing on the outside. Why this motherfucker ain't doing this? Why this motherfucker ain't doing that? Why this one? Or thinking about what this person doing, what this person not doing. Man, mm -hmm. You just got to, because you can't control it. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, we're speaking about history and, you know, we you, you said something important, you know, things we can't erase. Uh, something we can't erase from your history yeah. is, you know, being a part of the draft oh, pick. Oh, you see the hat? Oh, the hat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, you fly, man. First off, we have to admire the fit. You fly, man. That's but do, that's man. that's normal thing, right? Jet little Jeff Hammy work custom. That's hard. He made this straight for the Apollo show. These I saw him gifted that to y'all, man. I see I see FMF. Yeah. That, that, wow. That, that's my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sir. We're going to get to that. Head to toe. You know what I'm saying? That's, hat, man, no, you fly. Hat, no. Thank you. A little ACG. You know what I'm saying? Y'all bringing that back, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's not, not really about bringing it back. We just doing it. Again. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just about going in the closet, pulling out something like, oh, I ain't wear this in a minute. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's what we do. You know what I mean? All the niggas, we just like pull shit out. You know what I mean? I've been sitting. You know I mean, everything is just being brought back, brought back. So, you know, now it's just about, oh, this what we doing? Or oh, that's what we, because 
you check our resume. Niggas done did pretty much and started all this shit when it comes to this fly shit. Mm -hmm. Niggas is just re resurges it. Resur what you say? What's that word? Resurging? Surging? Whatever you call it. I'm with you. Hey, Amen. I'm with you. I can understand it. That's all that yeah, matters. <laughs> but, you know, you know, we were talking about history, and, and uh, I, I wanted to, to tap in a little bit with the draft pick, right? Because that was the oh, first shit. group that you were a part of. Yeah. You know, so I wanted That's to know, uh, like, what was the strategy behind you signing with the draft pick, which was kind of a West Coast label at the time, no, I versus, okay. versus, you know, Rockefeller, which was East Coast. What was the strategy right, behind so that? Draft pick. Um, a lot of people. This is before. Damn, this. My fans probably don't even know about draft. So I, before I met Cam and them. Oh I, no! Sorry, could you put the mic a little closer? I'm just, sorry. Before know. I met Cam, I mean Cameron, which is um, diplomat style, like the one who gave me my shot and my chance. Um, I was actually had a partner. His name was Malik, mm -hmm. and we had started a group, and we were called a draft pick. And we were doing a little guy. That's how Cam, I guess, wound up hearing Tapping about in. me. Yeah, you know what I mean, and um, and of course my cousin bringing him and telling him about me. But yeah, we had a little group draft pick. But um, we didn't. We signed a priority. Priority records. records. My bad. Was priority I'm records was a West, West Coast, Coast based yeah. label at the time. They had Ice Cube, Mac Ten, and all them signed, and you know. It was a lot of big West Coast, East Coast shit going on at the time. So that definitely wasn't a, a fit for two young New York artists. They didn't really know what to do with us. So, But we were just, we were young. We were like fucking, so this is before I met Cam. So I was probably like really like 15. You know what I'm saying? So just to get a deal on a major label was like, a big wow, deal. wow. Yeah, so yeah. we would have signed anywhere realistically. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. the label that had major artists, they had Ice Cube. Even though it was from the West Coast, it was like, fuck, it's fucking Ice Cube. Like, I'm I'm glad you said that, though, because, you know, my mind went to, you know, a major label, rich with all these stars. Uh -huh. did you, you know, two teenagers, did y'all get that full experience? To no, it was, it, like I said, it wasn't a good experience because mm -hmm. they were more of a West Coast-based label. Like I said, it was a lot of um, bad blood between the East Coast and the West Coast. So, mm -hmm. You know, they just chose to support more of the West Coast artists that they had that were winning at the time instead mm -hmm. of, you know, I guess take the chance and really invest what they needed to invest in us into making us, you know what I mean, what we needed to become as stars. So it was like we got signed, we got a little bit of signing money for signing, and we just was signed over there for a little while. And, mm, yeah. Up, leaving. And y'all used to perform, another thing that kind of was a full circle, because y'all used to perform at the Apollo, right? We actually did perform then, at the Apollo a couple times. Me last and Saturday, you better, got to touch, yeah. or Saturday and Sunday, you got to touch the, the Apollo again, Drake brought... With Drake, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I performed, I performed at the Apollo numerous times. You yeah. know, it's a legendary, it's part of the Harlem history, like, if mm -hmm. you don't know from even before I was born. I'm saying they used to have this thing called before the internet and all this, even TV. So you had Soul Train mm -hmm. and you had some called the Apollo, which was called Live at the Apollo. It would come on on Saturday, one of the only black kind of like net, not even to say network, just a show on TV. Mm -hmm. And it was like a talent search. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They would search for talent, they would have people perform, and then they would have a big artist, whether it was Salt and Pepper mm -hmm. at the time, whoever was the big artist at the time do their main song that was out <clears throat> and then they would have like a comedy like yeah. somebody like Dave Chappelle come perform and then you know a host or whatever and then talent so that's how that was basically the show yeah. so but you just had to sign up anybody could sign up and it was a random pick and choose thing so me and my partner being from Harlem we signed up and you know we got to go we got to go we went three times in a row you know what I'm saying and after we won three times in a row, we lost the fourth time. You know, kept pushing. That was before <laughs> we got signed to Priority. We got signed, and, yeah. and that ain't happening. Yeah, but y'all was doing your thing on the stage. Now, yeah. now, make a long story short. I it's it it's dope to be able to do the Apollo as <clears throat> a young artist up mm -hmm. and coming without nobody knowing who I am. Just trying to mm -hmm. gain stardom and gain fame, then to be on the stage rocking it with somebody like Drake and us being legendary 
Harlem artists from the work we've put in and in, in, in just all the the concrete and ground that we've laid and paved the way. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was beautiful, man, coming out, you know, and Drake giving us our flowers the way he did. It was super dope. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Drake, shout out to Chubbs. I mean, shout out to Drake's Chubbs mm -hmm. and my Chubbs from ATL, Chubby Baby. Before we move on, I, I gotta ask, did anybody did y'all rub the did y'all get to touch the log? The, the, yeah, I touched the log. <laughs> is it still there? I try. Yeah, the, the log is still there. You yeah. know, the famous log in 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 um the Apollo. So it's like before you go to the stage, they used to have a good luck. It's like a wood. I think it was really from a part of a tree, mm -hmm. and it been there for so long. You're supposed to rub it for good luck. Mm -hmm. So I always try to rub the rub the log. No homo. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I go to the Apollo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, but uh, you know, it it was it was great to see Drake. You know, the speech that he gave honoring y'all. Yeah, yeah, that was. Dope. And for me, what came to my mind was, you know, Drake grew up on the other side of the world. So to hear a man from Canada mm -hmm. speaking on y'all like that made me wonder you know if while y'all got to travel the world were there other places that kind of shocked y'all of y'all influence that y'all went to um yeah at the time a lot of it was shocking man just going places i went to switzerland london all types of places and just getting a lot of love people waiting at the airports for us so you know it was all shocking and canada was definitely a place i got mad love at too like it was one of them places like i said when I landed, people was waiting at the airport for me with signs, shit mm -hmm. like that. So um, I'm just happy, happy we could be, you know, people that influence the culture the way we did. I'm happy Drake did it because as much as we always, I'm humble. So it's like, and I was just talking about people. Some I don't like bragging and talking about who we are. I feel like, some, you know, it's good for somebody else to say it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, give it to the people. And then coming from Drake, somebody that's kind of like the king of I couldn't say this actual era but maybe the era right before this leading into this mm. is pretty much the king uh, you know what I'm saying for that to come out of his mouth a lot of people I think took to like oh like I might might have might have really googled and said I mean really really look at these boys so it's cool yeah. it was dope it was dope but we know who we are we know what's up I mean we from Harlem niggas from Harlem got a got an ego about us already like you know what I mean you can't fuck with us so we don't need nobody to tell us that we we always know who he is wait you know huh, we gotta walk back you don't think Drake is the king of this era what I'm saying is I'm talking about like right right now like when I say like I do that's why I said I would call him the king of the era before this and right now leading oh, okay, in, leading okay. into right now that's okay. what that's what my don't get my word you're going <laughs> at. leading into right now he's still the king but mm -hmm. with the you know the babies little ba little babies the um nba young boys mm -hmm. like they really hot right now you know what i'm saying and all yeah. these other artists that the drill artists you know what i'm saying shit niggas is popping yeah right now so you know, you said you're humble, so I will give you your flowers because at that time, like, it seemed like everyone, like, kind of caught that confidence you had, that swag you had, your mm -hmm. flow. And it seemed like people from the jump knew, like, oh, this this guy, this kid at the time is a star. So, like, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, like, at that age, like, where did that bravado came from at such a Harlem. young age? Harlem. That yeah. bravado came from Harlem. All that came from Harlem. That's That's what you got being in Harlem. Harlem was an exciting place. It was always about, we, we, all right. So I kind of told you about the history of Harlem, right? Mm -hmm. That being said, we felt like New York was the the best place, right? And we were the best borough in New York. This is how we felt at the time, right? Mm -hmm. So with New York being, we felt like the best city at the time. Harlem being the best borough in the city. Us be, So we, not only are we from the best city we're from the best borough in that city who do we even compete with the rest of the niggas in our borough nobody can fuck with us so we that's why when you see paid in full like you see all like the dame pull up and be like oh i got my thursday car this is my wednesday car this is my friday bitch that's how we <laughs> act because it's like yeah all day we just stunting on yeah. each other like we we built our our wow. whole aura off of like 
how much money you got in the car, nigga? You got four hundred thousand. I got five hundred thousand. Like it's all. It was always and you, my man. I'm not struggling yeah. on you, really. Like it's, it's not it was, competitive. Thing. It was a. It was competitive, but in like okay. a laughter. You know what I'm saying? Like. I want you to win, you yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah, nigga, I'm stunting on you type of way. And yeah. that's always how Harlem been. So with that being said, you gain the, that true nature of always competing in that, oh, oh, I might go see him with this new fly shit on. Oh, I'm gonna make sure I'm fly to him next time I see him. Oh, I'm gonna make sure I got the newest car next time I see him. And that just gives you that, oh, we always, we always chasing the next fly, the next, it's like a high, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So. And then speaking of fly shit, man, like from I I understand the background behind it, but you know when you were wearing the bandana yeah. on top of your head as a crown, mm -hmm. like obviously I understand the gang affiliation behind it, but uh, you made it fashionable for people who weren't a part of, a part of gang. Were you aware of what you were doing at the time? I mean, like I said once again, just being from Harlem, I think we were just aware that we were fly. Mm -hmm. Just we were aware that we were fly motherfuckers. We were aware of that the influence that everybody we had, we weren't aware of that. Nah, because mm. if we were aware of that, we would have capitalized off a bit more, and we would have took care of a lot more business, and we would have approached a lot of business differently back then. What inspired you to want to do that in the, in the first place? No, and just being different. Just wow. always, like I said, I right, once again being from Harlem, you always want to have the neck so you always want to do something that he's not doing so why he doing that i want to i want to do bandanas niggas mm. wearing they bandanas like this i'm on four minds and wear my shit like this so it just looks it's always just trying to be the next so it's like that's why it's like we always could set trends because once if you look it's a lot of see now niggas caught on so it's like i don't even really do it i'm on my own shit i got the flyer shit icfmf clothes so I don't read you know what I mean but it's like niggas know but back in the day it's like we started the whole like hold on you gotta look most people follow right so whatever's hot that's what everybody's doing it's Dior everybody's Everybody. wearing Dior yeah. so I'm already on to that I'm moving on to get the next thing already mm. I'm looking for the next thing while everybody's wearing Dior that's one thing I gotta give. Guess me. what? I and I know I'm fly enough to niggas gonna say, "What's that Jewels is wearing?" Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm already on to that. That's why with Michael Murray, I knew niggas was jacking ball mains. As soon as I'm like, "Nah, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to do ball mains." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Drake had the line about that. not wearing Michael Murray's. You know what I'm saying that's cool. Everybody yeah. to each his own. Hey, niggas can say what they want. I fuck with Michael Murray. I still got you know. I fuck with him. You know what I'm saying I don't. I wear more of my shit now. I don't mm -hmm. as much, but again, bringing introducing the jeans and all that, I was solely responsible for that in a lot of ways in the hip hop industry for sure. Hands down. Now back to the bandana. I, I wonder, did you receive any flack or tension from right. people out in the West Coast when you were out there just wearing a bandana around your head? Um. I wouldn't say we received flack for the actual bandana, but then mm -hmm. again, yeah, because, you know, gang culture was big and mm -hmm. L.A. was big and you had to watch how you moved in L.A. always, especially back then when it came to wearing flags and red and blue flags, mm -hmm. it's particularly. You understand what I'm saying? It was it was definitely a big thing. So, you know, just had to... I've always been a, a, a firm believer of, you know, trying to trying to um move the right way mm -hmm. so you can really do out here is try to try to move move the right way you know what i'm saying and and you can't assure something but you can try to not be around certain things to not put yourself in that situation mm -hmm. and i feel like it's artists a lot of artists you know they put themselves in situations you know i mean i've grown I've i've been blessed enough to be be able to still be here and knowing the, the type of situations I've been able to escape and and you know what I'm saying now knowing you know I got family I ain't trying to put myself in those type of situations no more you know see what I'm saying you know and and that also makes me wonder if around that I time I survived though that's why I say with the young niggas sometimes yeah. I'd be like man all I could do is pray for them and you know what I mean mm. I su I survived my 20s my early <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying I yeah. just could pray that they they do the same you know what I'm mm. saying and I, I got love for all of them that's why I always say chase the dream man chase the dream because other than that you know you ain't get caught up
a whole bunch of other shit. Yeah, you and that leads me to my next point. I wanted to I wanted to know like was there was the checking in culture relevant at that time? Like did y'all ever have to do that going over in the West Coast and Yeah, I mean I, I, I checked in respectfully. Okay. I, I still check in respectfully. I feel like respectful check ins are, are are cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I don't have to check in. Let's be clear. Okay. I don't check in cause I have to, cause I'll go anywhere. I choose and please and don't call a motherfucking person. And if something happens because of that, then that's what it was meant to happen. That's how I live. But I check in respectfully because, you know, when you go to people's town and they have, you know what I'm saying, certain auras and they have certain, is I feel like you should, mm-hmm. especially people that you fuck with. I mean, if I go to a town and somebody I fuck with, cause it's niggas that come to the town, and I, I always put it to certain niggas. I'm a type of nigga that I, I, I'm a real nigga. So anybody's ran across me, artist wise, no jewels. I roll out the carpet if a nigga come to town, and it's like I show a nigga love. You know what I'm saying, I, I, I mean, I make sure he gonna get whatever he need. However, if I gotta send my peoples their way, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying, however, whatever. So, you know. You don't still wear, you don't do that now, right? What? Like the checking in, are you still a part of that? It's not about or? checking in for me. That like It's bigger than that now. I'm grown, like I'm yeah. super old. So it's like, it's, it was, and it was never really, it was like, like I said, more, it was like more respect. respectful. Just mm-hmm. like niggas checking with me. So I'm checking in, you know what I mean? It's not even, I wouldn't even call it checking in. I uh, just saying calling my friends when I get to town. Mm-hmm. But niggas labeled it checking in. So, I mean, cool. That's y'all want to put tags on everything and then make it seem fucked up because that's y'all mentality. I don't got time to think like that. I do what I want when I want to do it, mm-hmm. and I move how I want. Did that? Did these games niggas is playing making up this whole illusional life? You know what I'm saying. Um, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, because obviously you have the experience and the knowledge. But to me, it felt like the East Coast was more responsible for like the explicit gang lyrics in the in the music around that time like and i feel like a lot of people want to credit you know the west coast because they said you know ice t had that six in the morning record was kind of like the first record that kind of like um i guess was recognized as the first gang record Mm -hmm. uh uh but i feel like the story in that was of somebody from new york so like who I mean I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly that's that goes back way before a little bit before my time. The whole gang culture I'm not claiming to be I don't think the East Coast started. I wouldn't say the East Coast are responsible for starting gangs. Mm. It was a culture that we adapted. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? It was a culture that was brought to us. You know what I'm saying? It was definitely more trendy and more done on the West Coast. But things spread. And that's how the world is. You understand what I'm saying? The same way rap spread. Hip-hop started in New York. So we can't be mad at nobody. We just like us saying we're mad at them for rapping. Mm -hmm. They're mad at us for gangbanging. Think people going to pick up stuff. People travel. People migrate. The fuck? People live here for 10 years, go all the way over there. Ain't for 10 years. But guess what they do? They take what's with them, with them. Mm. So if the gang is with them, they take that shit with them. Niggas in jail getting shipped. They don't. When you go to jail, you don't have your number. They ship you wherever the fuck they want to ship you. So if I'm repping blood and I'm a real nigga and they and I'm from East Coast and they send me West Coast, guess what, and they send me the West Coast and I'm from East Coast. Guess what I'm repping when I get to the West Coast? Same fucking thing I was repping on the East Coast. Y'all niggas get with it, nigga. So that's how shit happens. Mm-hmm. That's how life works. I'm saying shit spreads. So at the time, yeah, you had your. I think it was more or less like everybody just wants their credit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And they get it. You know, that's West good. Coast. You know what I mean? But the West Coast is not even responsible. Chicago is responsible for gang culture. How so? Ch- Chicago had the first gangs, to my knowledge, before, like, I'm talking about, like, Black Panthers and shit like that, these other gangs before Bloods and Crips. Bloods mm. and Crips may have started, to my knowledge, like, more on West Coast. Those actual, but gang culture started in Chicago, mm. to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. A lot of this shit happened before me, so once again, I'm just, this is my opinion. This opinion, is shit yeah. that I, not even my opinion, shit that I just think, you know I mean? People could do more of a history, 
and maybe tell me. But you know what I mean, so it, it, it's all just adapted culture. You know what I'm saying just like music, music, yeah. Music. And, and speaking of speaking of music, I feel like um, you know y'all were more Look at drill. Drill's yeah. doing the same thing right mm-hmm. now. It's adapted culture. Where did drill start from? Chicago. Yeah. Same play I just told you the gang started from. They did the same thing with the drill. And look, everybody's taking it. You know what I'm saying? And and like I was saying, speaking of the music, you know, like y'all had, nowadays they're trying to, you know, uh, uh, silence the, the, the rappers from what they put in their lyrics. And I feel like at that time, y'all were very like, the yeah, forerunners we got away. We got away with putting, a lot more. Yeah, because away with a lot more. But. I wanted I wanted to read like records like Kill 'em. You know, y'all have lines like "Would kill you to get it." Like you know, like very aggressive lines. Like, do you yeah. feel? Uh, do you feel we like got away with a lot more? You know what I mean, now they allowing people that don't deserve to have opinions to have opinions, and people mm. with, with 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 the will of the internet and comments being so effective, and people living and dying and allowing it to really affect who they are, what they go. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, when that where, where did cancel culture come from? Mm-hmm. That had to come from when you really think about comments. Wow. Who can cancel you? People in your comments, right? If, mm-hmm. if, if it even, it, I don't even know if this podcast even works. Like, is it fucking cancel? I don't even know. But I'm just saying, like, I'm just trying to figure these things out. How can, where does that derive from? Where does it come from? Like, a bunch of motherfuckers in your comments saying a bunch of shit. Like, Let's DM each other and start a whole fucking pack of us. If we get together, a bunch of hating motherfuckers that don't, we could just do whatever the fuck we want. We don't like motherfuckers. We could just and just get a bunch of people that's on our side to just cancel motherfuckers, I guess. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. You know, you, you said y'all got away with a lot, you know, as the yeah, OG. A lot, a lot more as, as far as that, as far as yes. being able to say, say what whatever. we want and not getting crucified for it. But then again, you know, I got crucified. We got crucified for things we yeah. said now. I, I touched on some touchy subjects before, and they got, you know, like Muhammad Atta and the whole 9 11 situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Got a lot of backlash for which would probably been 10 times worse in, in this era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, wanted to, I wanted to know, like, do you feel any responsibility for. I'd have had a bunch of celebrities saying, why you said that, Joel? <laughs> that'll hold you responsible yeah. personal phone calls yeah, I was in that age that, that I don't get that was uh, young I don't give a fuck ever yeah you know what I'm saying I, didn't, I don't really give a fuck were you conscious of what you were, you were writing yeah, or it was just I'm like I'm always whatever. conscious of what I'm writing I don't okay. ever try to say nothing you know what I'm saying that I'm not conscious of but the whole point was that's how I felt mm-hmm. you know what I mean people people when you you know we live in a world today where a lot of sensitive people and they, they take a lot of things you say out of contents mm-hmm. and with context and with the internet it's easy to do that so what I said was what I meant but if you say it to people in a way in a certain way it's easy to manipulate them and make them think oh I was coming off you know like cold heartedly but I wasn't you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. I was specifically pointing out an area of a man having courage enough to do something for a certain group of people and just risking his life going kamikaze. It had nothing to do with him pl- flying the planes into the towers, killing innocent people. But people always find that, like, oh, he flew planes into, how could you be supporting? No, I didn't support that. I supported the fact of one man having courage enough to do something that crazy for something that he had that much belief in. No matter what it was, whether it was nine eleven, whether it was a fucking toilet bowl, that's all. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Do you do you feel the need to do that what? in this in this era to kind of explain some nah. of the things that you said nah. back then? Not really. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I don't get asked too much about about that specific things too much no more. You know what I'm saying it's, it's kind of like, but I'm glad you asked about it. But no, nah, I don't feel the need to explain myself about it. You know what I mean. But sometimes I do because, you know, we in a different time, a different era, of course. And, you know what I mean? Some people that just may not be that familiar or they may not be as familiar with the story or they may not be as familiar to the answer that I've given. So just kind of refreshing maybe some of the new listeners or new people that not be as familiar with Joel Santana. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
I do I do want to move on from this, but I just I want to get some clarity from your part. Mm. How do you feel personally about the rap act as a whole? Like how do you feel about it? The fact that they're trying to punish, you know, these rappers, these kids based off of what they're putting in their music. How do you feel about that? Uh, I don't feel it's right. I mean, music is just it's entertainment, it's freedom of speech, it's in the amendment. You should be able to that shit should be totally banned from like courtrooms and shit like that. It's no way. You can't hold an actor, you can't play a movie from from a role in the actor. Mm-hmm. Some of these musicians are the same way. They don't even write their own rhymes. You know what I'm saying? So what do you say to the people who say like the rappers should have some type of they should take some ownership or uh, some responsibility in what they're saying because you know, they're the ones that's putting it in the Yeah, music, I mean, it, or it, out it, the world. it's a touchy situation, man. I feel like it's a touchy situation. I don't know. I mean, in some ways we should, and in some ways I feel like Tupac, man, you know? Like, hey, I understand I'm looked at as a role model, but I just chose to make music, and as long as I give you a great album, my job is done. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If, if artists feel that way, you have a right, she has a right to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you know you have some of your artists that's more into things, and they they you know do you know feel like they need to have that voice. Some artists just don't want to speak on certain things. They know their voice is powerful, and they don't want to speak because what if I don't feel? What if how I truly feel is fucked up? Mm. Yeah. And I know how I truly feel is gonna bother people. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that this is. But you have people following, like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Make sure you just shut the fuck up. So every celebrity is different. We all human at the same time too. Yeah. That's what people fail to realize. So you know, everybody, everybody needs to speak. Up. Everybody. Sometimes, you, nah, we don't ask. You don't want everybody to speak up all the time. My motherfuckers don't even know what to say. Don't know what they saying. Why they saying it? Niggas just be talking just to talk. Talking just to get clout. Talking just to join the conversation. All types of. Wacky shit, niggas be wacky. We talking about rappers or just like everybody. everyone in general? Everybody be wacky, like. You know but see, man? the pushback I get is like y'all when y'all were doing it, it was more of like y'all were reminiscing on your past life, and yeah. now it's like these kids are actually going to, to commit it and then putting it in a song the next second later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was to a point because we had. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> It, it, it was like, yeah, they. It, it, it's definitely hand in hand. It was hand in hand with us too. But it was like we we was definitely more towards getting the money. It's like, and getting out of it as quick as possible. Mm. It's like they love it. it, it it's like it, they. It's like it's fueling them. Like they mm. getting. They getting to it. They chasing the dream. They getting the money and shit. But they still want to drill and handle the business on the street yeah. because it's like, and and they see. And it's it's translating to views and all this. That's the you know what I mean. So it's like when seeing that, it's like it kind of like in a fucked up way. It drives it drives, you know, even more of a negative force to the situation because it's like it's like oh shit, I could get money off of doing some shit that you know what I'm saying, or for going to you know yeah, some that's gonna give me a thousand million views in a yeah, day and yeah. a week. Yeah, I get, I get what That's you're saying. Long one, man. That shit ain't worth it, man. Jail, yeah, you don't want to end up in jail, man. You don't want to end up dead. And I know I'm saying that shit like just yeah, Sam Cornell, cool. no, nigga. You do not want to end up there. Neither one of those places, I promise you. Jail, all them niggas. Look at Tay K. Tay K said they that nigga feel like a hamster. Mm. <laughs> that nigga was home talking about he doing the race. You know what I'm saying? So, but that ain't to deter nobody from the music. I don't think the music should dictate that. I think people should be able to make fun music, make any kind of music they want to make. I agree. You understand what I'm saying? Whether they do the things they say they doing or not. I used to feel like you should should have have the. You know what I'm saying, but I do feel like it should be kind of like a gray area. Like, what what does that look like? I don't know. Like 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 you have your kids that are like you write or right they in the streets actively doing that. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? But then you have them maybe a little bit more suburban kids that's just like watching it and it's like they do like enjoying it and talking about it. May, they may talk about popping a bean or saying something and they're not doing it. It's like... Is there anything wrong so with the two? I, I, I almost feel like, nah, it's cool because I'd rather you... 
I'd rather you kind of not do both, mm. but I'd rather you more say it and not do it. I'd rather you say you you popped a perk and didn't pop a perk. You understand what I'm saying? But that's back to y'all though, because y'all made because because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's still entertainment. And we have to get back to it being entertainment and parents being parents and mm. people. You understand what I'm saying? We are not people's parents, bro. Mm-hmm. That's it, bro. Niggas allow music and entertainers to start parenting their kids mm. and culture to start parenting their kids. And mm-hmm. that's the fucked up thing because it has so much influence. But look at these other races. They've proven different. They've proven us different by doing other methods. Mm. So you understand what I'm saying? It's It's like, come on, bro. Shit is what it is. Like, nobody, I'm not dumb. So I'm just gonna continue just sitting back. I got family, I got kids, I got I, I got people that I love, I gotta take care of them. Like I, I can't control the uncontrollable. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, I'm just sitting here watching the circus. That's all. Now, I do wanna I do wanna uh transform just a little bit. Uh I wish I would have told you earlier because I wanted to hear it myself, but when I found out that you still kind of remember, I don't know if you do, so I'm going to see if you do, but uh, you were talking about the rap, you rap for Cam in the back seat of the car. Shit. Do you still remember that? Hell fucking no. Oh, oh man. man. I would love to hear that. <laughs> I would love to hear that shit right now. That was man, I wanted, I see, I wanted to bring it, I wanted to tell Shona to like remind you to like, Yo, see if you can remember that. that that's yeah, that's yeah. a golden moment right there. Right. I think the world want to hear that. Dude, shit. I think the but what was your intention for that for that moment when you when you were I don't there know, rapping? Spur of the moment. I just had rhymes always ready to go. Mm-hmm. I was always a you know what I mean. I was always I was trained to go. So I mean, my man called me downstairs and told me he had Cam in the car. I'm like, what? Shit. Just just go. I would just start rapping. As soon as I got in the car, I don't even know what, why that specific rap I kicked came to my head first. So I just just start rapping. I'm like, God blows mine. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I wish I, I wish I. I'm not from New York, but I can't, I can't let you say that without saying pause, OG. <laughs> pause. I just can't do it. Well, we say no homo. But all right, no homo. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let, let you get that one. I'm you know, what I'm saying? Like, I, I got so much respect for you, OG. I can't let you do that one. Oh shit! I can't. Oh shit! He trying to G check me, y'all. Nah, you know, I love you, man. He I can't let you. pause check me, y'all. It's crazy, y'all. I couldn't let you do that without. So if shit happens. I'm cool with it. <laughs> nah, but I want to I wanna, uh, get back more to your history, man. Was was old boy like the first global record for you? Would you say? Hell yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh boy. How did that record change, you know, Joel Santana at the time? Turn me into a fucking star. How so? Shit was just big. It just came out and blew up. Mm. Like we took it to the radio. That shit was like an instant hit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Instant. Like almost like instantly, like everybody knew it was gonna be a hit. Labels, as soon as we took it to the radio, labels, cool, we got to get this mix massive. We got to get the ball where everybody kind of felt it with that record. Mm-hmm. And everything we felt was just started happening. Once we felt it, we took it to the radio because me and Cam felt it once we did it. Flex heard what we felt. He played it that night, made a movie, kept playing, kept playing. Our phone was blowing up like we didn't even get the sample clear. We took it straight to the radio. They wound up taking a hundred percent of the the publishing for the sample because we didn't even we just put the record out <laughs> wow. without getting the sample clear first. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All that type of shit. So, you know, I know you, you speak on flex. It didn't matter. It wasn't. It, it you know, still re- records like that. You can't stop you, it. You don't give. You don't fucking care about a sample. Yeah. If you stop yourself from putting out a record like that because you worried about a sample, you's a fucking idiot. Mm. Records that change your life, you don't, you, you don't, you don't care about. I mean, if you talented art, you don't care about moments like that. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? Because they're gonna keep coming. Now, if you feel like you made one record and you're never gonna make another record, you bank your whole life on that fucking record, and that's it. But any talented artist, like you, 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 you have. It's like taking a punch. You know what I'm saying? 
somewhere you're going to take a punch. You know, in this game, you're going to take a punch. It's cool, though. Because if I could take that punch and that punch allows me to get in a position the way I could give you this punch and knock your ass the fuck out and the fight is mine, guess what? I won. Mm -hmm. I got the belt at the end, nigga. I'm eating. And I I got everything that comes with it. The cars, the jewelry, the bitches, everything. What's up? You lost the fight, but you hit me. Okay, cool. You got that. You want to run around and say you hit me for the rest of your life? All right, cool. That's your claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the niggas who say they hit Floyd or they hit the, all right, cool. Like, oh, you hit Floyd. All right, cool. You hit him. Yeah. <laughs> it's he's, no matter. He's 50 and old, bro. Yeah, exactly. He's flying on jets everywhere. You fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah, you you speak about Flex and K Slay a lot about the help that they had mm. you know, in your career. Was there any other DJs that had any? A lot of DJs. I don't just speak about just Flex and K Slay, but um, definitely Flex, definitely K Slay, R.I.P. K Slay, the late great legendary K Slay, and he was from Harlem. Rest in peace, his soul, good brother. Gave a lot of up and coming artists. You know, his big thing was giving the artists that you know weren't getting the light shined on them that that maybe should. K Slay's whole focus was giving those type of artists shine. So, you know, you had to respect him. I mean, he did things, a lot of things his way. Like, you noticed that he wasn't, like, you know, following the norm when it comes to, like, being a radio DJ. Mm. And, of course, he moved up a lot, but he probably could have moved further if he would have did a lot of the things, like kiss ass. You know what I mean? A lot of ways. So, you know. Now, a uh, age hub, you know, barbershop debate. I think that we still have, you know, at my at my young age, mm -hmm. you know, they they always say, you know, you were responsible for for carrying the dip set. How do you engage in those conversations? Do you even entertain those conversations? Whatever, you know, everybody got a right to their opinion. That's like if people say I didn't carry them, right? Some mm -hmm. people gonna say Cam is the best dip set. Some people gonna say Jim. Some people are gonna say me. I don't really, you know. It is what it is. Everybody has a right to their opinion. I don't get mad. The people who say I am, I'll be like, that's love. I respect <laughs> it. The people that say Jim is, that's love. I respect it. I, I've had people come up to me and be like, you the best. You the best one. I don't like. I don't care about nothing. All right, cool. I have people come up to me and be like, yo, I love you, but but Jim, Jim is just my man. It's something about him. I just really love. Like you, all right, but. I'd be like, all right, it's all love. Same, so it's all love, bro. Yeah. It's all love. I'm just happy, happy we could, you know what I mean? Be, a, be able some, to have that conversation. Some, yeah, some yeah. type of, you know, I come from, come from dirt, man. Mm. Now, I saw Jim, Jim was on another uh, interview, and he was giving you your flowers. He said the success of the diplomats wouldn't be possible with, without you. Yeah, no, he hit that on the nose. Jim, Jim said it, and in, in Jim is... Jim went to college, man, so he's better. Me, I'm not going to say I'm not good at words because, of course, I am. I'm a rapper, but just, like, when they like the interviews, I'm definitely, but Jim is really good at, like, you know, kind of, like, getting it out the way. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like, damn, I wanted to say that, too. But, yeah, Jim, Jim did it. And then me, I'm so humble. I don't like, you know, always bigging myself up, bigging myself up. So, but like I said, you know, nothing he said was was... Was, was off, you know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I don't think. So out of, out of your mouth, everybody, like... Everybody can contest to, to what it was and, and, and the structure of the dip set. Cam was the boss. He was already a... Um, Cam wasn't an artist on Diplomat. He couldn't be, so we needed a star artist. Jim wasn't even an artist, really, at the time. You know what I'm saying? So I was the, the, the one. I'm saying it was nothing, you know what I mean? It was like, it was cut and dry and I, I did my part and I and I did it well. Yeah, what did that part look like? I showed I, off. That's what I wanted to showed what I wanted off. to know. Show my ass. Yeah. Mm hmm Was that was was that your ingredients? You you came in with just the, the whole swag, the whole package? Is that yeah, basically just being what, from all I'm like yeah. I just came in and just, you know, I was just that nigga. <laughs> yeah. Still that nigga, but you know, just had to come come and come and do what I do, man. Yeah. You know, let niggas let niggas know what time it was. I wasn't nothing to be fucked with. You still feel that way too, I you know. As yeah, you should. Yeah. yeah. You said a little bit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you what you 
You not always just like I said in a humble way. Oh, I'm like, I, <laughs> I you trying to be humble with it. My slogan is y'all niggas know me. It's always mm. been so. It's like, you know what I mean, y'all niggas know. They know what's up. Yeah. And if you don't know, you can ask somebody about me. I'm one of them night. I'm one of them type niggas. I don't like to pop it. I like to show it. But you know what I'm saying. I give a nigga a little son. So let's let's go back to uh, old boy real quick because hearing you on 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 Drink Champs and hearing um, Cam on Million Dollar Worth of Game, um, mm -hmm. y'all had some interesting things to say about that record, uh, mm -hmm. specifically regarding the Jay Z verse that was taken out. Mm -hmm. um, you said it was due to to pettiness. Cam said it was due to pettiness. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a conversation that was shared between you and Cam when he made the effort to take the verse out? Nah, I ain't, I ain't make no decisions like that. That was a boss decision at that time, and Cam was the boss. I didn't have no, you know what I mean? Only input I had in my mind, I was like, he really going to erase this nigga verse, Jay-Z verse? But I, I, Did you, were you able to share that with, the, with him? We've laughed about it. But I know Cam. I ain't really as much as I said that in my mind. I knew he was gonna do it because I know Cam. Mm. I know Cam. I'm saying I, I know Cam. I knew he and Cam is that. That's his aura. He got just as big as an ego as as Jay Z. No matter how big people, other people may look at Jay Z like what? That's Jimmy. Cam is like I don't give a fuck, nigga. You know who I am? That Harlem shit. You know what I'm saying. So Cam felt like you didn't give us a verse when the song, we was just about to put the song out. You decided to put a verse on the song once the song was all the Shoot. way through the roof. You know what I'm saying? Where anybody would have put a verse on the song at that time. It was one of those songs. Like, that was that type of song Drake would have put a verse on there. Wow. It was that type of record. Yeah. If that record was out right now, Drake would have put a Drake would have put a verse on that, and it goes to show you by look what he did by bringing us out. We performed them records. He said what he said because of those records. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to show you the impact of that kind of yeah. record. Like Drake would have got on in, so that's it's like anybody would have just jumped on. It was so big. So it didn't have anything to do with you know what you said on Drink Champs also about. Him throwing shots at Nas at the oh, time yeah, before and then the, the Ether came out. That, that too. Or that the, the takeover. That, that's why the verse got erased. Because of the take? No, that, that's what I'm saying. That's I said that's the reason why the verse got erased. Because of the J? The because this? the first reason I said, for one, he didn't give us a verse when it was like, not that we needed it, but it's like we could have used it more. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. At that time, we didn't need nobody on the record. The record was couldn't got got no bigger. Mm -hmm. Then we looked at it like now, and you dissing Nas on here. Wow. We handled our business with Nas. You got business. You got to handle with Nas. Don't drag us into that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know that's how Cam looked. That's how we all kind of looked at it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now, can I look at it from a, a business perspective, right? Because y'all with Rockefeller at the time, right? Uh, Dane got Cam the deal at Rockefeller, right? So business-wise, does Dane come to y'all and like, yo, that doesn't reflect? Because I'm sure Jay is looking like, yo, Dane is my man. He brought me Cam. Mm -hmm. Is that is there an issue? Does Dane uh, have a conversation with y'all about it? Like, was he did he feel a certain way about it? But about what though? What? Take him, uh, Cam taking uh, Jay off the off the record. Dane, if, I don't think Dane felt no type of way about it. He kind of like, honestly, I don't remember what happened. I, I think Cam told him over the phone. And Dane's re first, re first reaction was laugh. He laughed, but but not in a way like, like, like <laughs> you what? You, you, you really took Jay's verse off? Cam like, yeah, nigga, fuck that nigga. So, but Cam and Dame had, a, 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 you know, they had this kind of relationship too. Like they were super cool, but you know, they could tell each other what they wanted to tell each other. So Dame like kind of like, hey, you what? <laughs> yeah, I raised that nigga, bro. I think it was like more or less like, 
Cam, you crazy. You racist nigga verse type shit. Like, psh. but it was one of those things to where Dane was like, oh man. How can I, what can I really do? Cam, yeah. the verse is erased. I know Cam, Cam don't give a fuck. Oh shit, Jay is my man. I know he's probably gonna feel some type of way. Now I'm just stuck in the middle. Fuck. One of you ever been stuck in the middle of a situation mm-hmm. that you can't really do nothing about? You're just stuck in the middle. Mm-hmm. That's what it was, I think, for Dame. That that specific situation is like stuck in the middle. Cam erased the verse. He don't give a fuck. Jay probably gonna be upset. Yeah. Can I even pick a side? Mm-hmm. No. How do I deal with this situation? Wow. Uh, did Bleak had he, did he share anything with you in, during that time? Because you were close I with Bleak, Bleak, right? I, I mean, yeah, we was kind of close. I mean, me and Bleak was cool. I ain't had no issues with Bleak. And then I knew <clears throat> me and Bleak had run-ins because um, I was around Rockefeller before we even got me and my artist. My, I'm my artist. My partner Draft, mm-hmm. we with the group Draft Pick. We had a manager, and he used to hustle with people in Jay Z circle. Yeah. So he used to take us around him a lot. So I kind of knew Bleak. That's how you got the record together. That's right? how, yeah, even yeah. before, you know what I mean, I came back around to Rockefeller with Cam. So when he seen me with Cam and him, he's like, he knew me from before. He's like, mm-hmm. oh, shit, you done came. He saw my come up. He knew <laughs> yeah. me from before that, yeah. trying to get a deal to find Cam finding me. Like, oh, shit, like, that's what's up, Joel's you, you, you that nigga now. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, I mean. If you don't, if you don't mind me asking, I know this is like a... Uh, Unsung, you yeah. know, you you probably said this multiple times, but how did the the deal with Rockefeller happen? Like I know Cam, Cam was brought in, and then he brought the Dipset as a collective. Like, yeah, and so um, the deal with Rockefeller came along. Yeah, yeah, pretty much they wanted to sign. Um, well, they wanted to sign me. Okay. And as solo, as a yeah, solo, as a solo. Artist? Okay. And, you know, I was like, you got to give all of us a deal. Okay. We got to get a diplomat deal. We need a whole deal for everybody. So we used my leverage to get a deal for everybody. I wasn't signing a deal unless they gave us all a deal. Why? Because that's what I was. That's how I was taught to play the game. Like I mean, I was a soldier. I understood. I understood that the leverage that I I had could help my my people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So why not use it? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all. That's why it was simple at the time. So we we used the leverage to get the deal, get the label deal. You know, we didn't want, like, just an artist deal. We wanted a, a deal for, for the label. Yeah. So we could kind of do things the way we wanted to do things. And, and Cam kind of, like, structured and used it. So that part of it was great. That part of it was super, you know, everything. That part of it was dope. Girl, yeah. So when that, when that, when you, when y'all left, um, Rockefeller, you stayed at Def Jam, right? If I'm not mistaken. Left Rock, no. So I was because yeah, okay, when everything so, ended, when everything. Okay, so what, what Rockefeller is? Rockefeller is signed. They they through Def Jam. They filtered okay. through Def Jam. So, yeah, when um, Rock, when Dame and Jay Z broke up and Rockefeller was no more, the artist that well, Rockefeller kind of like, what do you call that? Um, by default. Go to Def Jam. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? If, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. They have they, cause 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 literally we 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 kind of signed to Def Jam in so many ways. You know what I'm saying if this label falls apart, which is the, you know, then you go to that label. You know what I'm saying? Those are some of the things that's in the contract that you probably don't really know and give a fuck about, but it's there. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So then, you know, we fast forward, you know, uh, in, in, into the the two thousands. I want I wanted to ask you early on during the conversation, we were talking about how, you know, you were like we got away with a with a lot of things, uh-huh. and I felt like you did in a way because I look up this record, uh, you know, it was it was an unreleased record. I don't know if you put it out, but uh, oh, kill yourself. Kill yourself. Did you get any backlash for putting out that record at the time? Nah, it was like a mixtape record. Mm-hmm. Um, nah, I ain't really getting no. You ain't getting, you ain't received no heat. Surprisingly, 
I'd have definitely got some now. Definitely nowadays, I'd have got some backlash for that. Was it you who put it out? Always, or was yeah, it was me. I was always good at that though. Topic records, sticking to topics. Like, and I always try to be creative. You know what I'm saying, and think of records. Like, even though we were talking about this the other day about my God willing project and the song I had called My Will. So that song, Kill Yourself, was kind of like a reflection of that. Like, I'm good at when it comes to a topic. Like, Little Boy Fresh, I know how to stick to the topic real well when it comes to music, like, very well. So I always try to find a topic that's, like, once again, it's just like the clothes, just different. Every project I try to look for, some type of topic that's just, I ain't going to say weird, but just, like, relatable, but then a little bit, like, my will. So the topic of my will was, I know we all going to die, right? But a lot of young rapping, you know what I mean? Just young, we don't have will. So my thing was, how do I say that? I'm going to write my will through this song. If I die tonight, where I want my jewelry to go, where I want my cars to go, where I want my money to go. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, and I did it. I did it well. Mm -hmm. So back to the Kill Yourself song, the Kill Yourself was just like, for all these niggas doing dumb shit, like we used to have this saying back then when I made that song called Commit That. We used to say that. Like if a nigga would say something dumb, we'd just be like, man, commit that. It's like, just commit suicide, nigga. You like, when you say some dumb shit, like, you nigga just say some dumb ass shit. You just be like, man, kill yourself, boy. You just said some dumb ass shit. Like, it was just like some shit we had. So I made a song called Commit That. And it's basically like, I'm telling you to commit suicide. You know what I'm saying? But not like in like a real way, like more like a funny, fun type of, not fun, but like, you so stupid, you need to commit suicide. Like, you don't even serve, like, you just dumb for no reason. Like, the things you're doing, and I explain that. If you really listen to that song, mm -hmm. it's like the things I'm saying. It's almost like an Eminem type of song. Yeah, very. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's how I wrote it. It's almost like an Eminem, like a, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you so dumb, just kill yourself. Like, you probably going to die doing the dumb shit I'm saying you shouldn't be doing anyway. That's why you need to kill yourself. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm -hmm. So let, let's stay in the present real quick because you you do have a, we're speaking of a project, you do have a project uh, coming out, We In Motion, right? Yep, uh, yep. DJ Drama. Okay. Uh, is this is this a part of the, the drama Gangsta Grill sequence? Uh, uh, Hold on. Here, yo, send this verse to X. He, he in the crib mixing, right? This Jada verse, he just sent it to me. Send this to him. <laughs> I love this. This is great. I, I know, but yeah, so we talking about the we in motion. <laughs> this is great. I love it. The how DJ Khaled say the vocals is in. You just got an exclusive. The vocals is in. <laughs> my man Jada, Jada Kiss just texted me, says he just sent me his vocals. So I got my engineer in my crib mixing. Wow. So he mixing up the the medicine. Right the now. The motion speak. project. So he was actually mixing that record. I was waiting for for Kiss to um, Send me his vocals, so. So what I was asking is, is this a part of the DJ drama Gangsta Grill uh, discography, or is it? I mean, in a way, I think everything drama does is a part of his legacy, so mm -hmm. I would say yes, but I definitely want to clear that up for people. This is more of a Joel Santana album that I okay. just reached out to drama and wanted him to, you know, sprinkle some of his sauce on, you know what I'm saying? And me and drama was always supposed to do a project together, so... I just thought, you know, it was perfect time. And this is more like what Tyler, the creator, did. Mm -hmm. It's an album that has DJ Drama kind of like narrating it. Was that when the call was made after the Tyler creator no. project? No. I've been, me and Drama, I know Drama. I was been supposed to do a drama, tape of Drama before 90%. It was just me. It was it, I am the fault of not having a Drama tape already. Just, you know. What's this one going to sound like? Um, Jewel's, uh, one thing about Jewel's is I always like to grow, but I've always liked to, st I, I've, I always like to stay Jewel's, but grow. Mm. And if you listen to all my albums and all my music, they, it's always a nostalgic part of Jewel's there, but it should always be a sense of growth and a sense of timing, meaning the timing of what's now, you know what I'm saying? whether it's just a beat or whether whatever it is. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, but the feel of this this one, um, I think the more, like, the lines of, like, God, how God willing was, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? 
some good good features on here, you know. Just 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 having some fun, you know, some some great records on here though. Records that I really think, you know, could do some damage. What's the, you know what I'm saying? So what's what is the, the the significance of the title? We in motion. What? We in motion? Yeah. I'm in motion right now. I'm okay. motion, have heavy motion going on right now. I'm just just moving. That's always been my slogan. Move he's moving. So, you know, when you when you moving, when you that's motion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Moving forward is motion. I'm saying everything is motion, so I'm in motion right now. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying I'm back in motion. You know what I'm saying I felt like you know I was in jail, I was stagnated, so you know it was a lot of lack of motion there for me. It was like a lot of sense of stagnation for me. So for me to be back in motion is a big thing for me. Mm. For me, me to be able to move freely, at will. You know what I'm saying do what I need to do to you know what I mean provide, take care of my family, be back in motion and 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 doing it. You know what I'm saying? And it, you know, the stars is really aligned and everything is really falling into place. I can't feel my face is doing, you know what I mean? Terrific. I got the the best thing out. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. The music is is about to drop and it's going to be just, it's everything. My, I got, I feel like the future when it comes to just music and my artists, you know what I'm saying? My son, Juju, um, Kato, Ski, um, Bad News, Ja Duty. Um, he just got so much dope energy over here at, at ICFMF. So, you know, I'm just I'm just excited for everything. That's you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's the motion you talking about. We got, we about. got yeah. fashion. We got the fashion. So we just I'm just start, just just pushing the lifestyle, man. Yeah, music, cannabis, mm -hmm. and fashion are three things you love. Love. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, I got high hopes right now. You know what I mean, real high hopes. Now, I want to ask a question as a fan because I don't know why I thought after the Whitney record came out a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, you and Heatmakers were going to No, that came out. Collab. That came out. That wasn't a couple of years ago. That was 22, though. right? Was it, was it this last year? Was it last yeah, year? Yeah, a couple months ago. Yeah, don't yeah. do me like that now. <laughs> yeah, that. Nah, nah. yeah, that was but, a couple months ago. But I don't know why I thought you and Heatmaker were going to at least put some type of collab. Yeah, no, he, me, 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 me and Heatmakers in Austin, I always tap in with him, and that's my dude. So we always gonna make music. I, I even when I did music, I never did a. My album was never a whole heat makers project. Mm -hmm. It was just a majority heat makers. You know what I mean, I never did a whole heat makers project. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it was just at the time, and my shit is based on whoever's giving me the beats, and I'm getting the feeling at the time. So you know what I'm saying? Me and Austin is always catch a vibe. You know what I mean? We we definitely plan on going in and making something special. But right now, I just was hearing a lot of... I haven't been out for a while. So to just lock in with one person was just like... You know what I mean? I was hearing a lot of music that I was liking. I was liking and I wanted to just, you know, give a lot of energy in a lot of different directions. So, you know, and everything was just coming out crazy. So mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. This is what I'm doing right now. This is obviously what... God wants me to do because this is this is how the music is coming out. You can't fight how the music is coming out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I only ask that because I feel like uh, just following your your history, mm -hmm. it seemed like he brings the 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 rich Joel out of you like that. Mm -hmm. That shit that everyone no, that's what, wants. That's why I always. That's why I always always you know go and I'm always. It's not like I'm not gonna work, but I'm not gonna. Like I said, none of my project was a whole heat makers project. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think people get get it confused. I think if I did a whole heat makers project, I don't think it would be with people. Uh, you know what I mean, I think it would get repetitive after a while. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people want that. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of people want what they want, and they say they want, want it, so they get it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, because people, you know, just be stuck in their ways, bro. I go on comments and some people like, yo, we want the old jewels and some people like, we don't want to hear that old shit. So what about the people who don't want to hear the old shit? So where does that leave me? Mm. Right? I can't, you know, I got to do for what I want to do, bro. I can't get caught up in, oh, this person wants, I think that's what they want. Or I think what that's what this, guess what? I'm going to do it. Do what you want to do. And, you know, it's going to be always how I've done it. Mm -hmm. And I've always got those results. I've always just been an artist with, I gotta show growth in 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 ways. You understand what I'm saying? I'm I've never backpedaled. All my my albums have been growth. 
Like I really had to sit down. And I've done this. I observed myself. Like what? What? How can I do this? Like, don't get caught up in that. What you just what you just said, people and what they think and want. Just do what you feel, bro. Just make music. You know what I'm saying? That's why I used to get caught up in not putting out music. So focus on what I think people want and not maybe, you know what I'm saying? Critiquing myself and trying to be so perfect. I just gonna put out music, bro, and just you know what I'm saying, just just let shit just put out music, man, and just put out music. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Let's, let's talk about the, put out the music. You know what I'm saying? Like they want that more than anything. I think people want the music from Joel Santana. So I'm gonna put out the music. Let's talk about the I can't feel my face brand because um, you know you were pushing that a while ago. If I if I remember, mm -hmm. uh, me and Wayne had a mixtape. The mixtape y'all put out, mm -hmm. you and Wayne, and you know I I believe. It was supposed to be a project, but an album. But it was supposed to be an album. Me and Wayne was going. To, Wayne is my brother. We were supposed to do an album together. That's how the whole "I can't feel my face" shit started. Well, that's where the name came from. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, you know, it wound up we leaked. Uh, well, a whole lot of records got leaked. Um, about thirty records, and it wound up being like one of the best leaked mixtapes to ever hit the street. So people wanted an album, but a lot of politics was going on in music at that time. I was signed to Cam, Def Jam. He was signed to Cash Money, um, Jink Unibro, one of another label. So it was mm -hmm. a lot of different entities that had to sign off and get shit done. And it was just like me and Wayne just wanted to make music. music out, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And be brothers. So how did how did it go from that to now the brand that that is that is mm -hmm. today we see? Because like the, the what cannabis I told you. And okay. That was the best, if not most, virus mixtape ever made. And that's a fact. One of them. And when I put out the gas, I knew it was fire because I smoked nothing but fire. So, and the name I thought was like, oh, if I can't feel my face. It kind of goes with the whole weed smoking. I can't feel my face if it's, I mean, it's dope. Mm. So I ran with that. And it's like, it just took on a life of its own. We took over the streets because I smoked the best weed. So, of course, I made sure. I had the best weed, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I do fashion, so I just kept everything under the same umbrella. It's just like levels. I can't feel my face, which is the baby. Then ICFMF, which is the acronym, mm -hmm. but it also stands for I create for my family. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's what we're doing by any means. We're creating for our family, families, and we are family. Mm -hmm. you, know what I'm saying? And you, you also have the label side of it. Yeah, that's what who, I mean. Who are some of the, the artists? So we got my son Juju. He's right over there. Okay. We got my um. It's almost like my son too, Kato. You know what I mean? He's right over there too. I got my um. Ski, like my son. Oh, he gets like my sons now. You yeah. Know what I mean? It's crazy because I'm used to being the youngest one around. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna. Ain't, I was gonna. Now he's eighteen. He's duty sixteen. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, ja, my nephew, he, I mean, they're my real nephew. So it's um, bad news. So I'm from, um, shout out to bad news from Syracuse. Yeah, we got we got a little dream team right now. We about to about to make some noise in this shit. Now, real. just some last minute questions before I get you out of here. Um, you you brought up Duty Low. I know you kind of put your arms around him. Uh, I'm, Didi. Duty's my nephew. Oh, word. Duty's my real nephew. Like, real, really, my nephew. Wow. Like, Ja, the one that y'all used to see in all the videos back in the days with us, that's Duty's brother. They have the same mother. Duty's mm -hmm. my nephew. So despite everything, you know, I decided to help Duty on a personal level and help him, you know what I mean, S live out his dream because he really, was really in the right. streets. Yeah. And I wanted to help him, you know, through his mom. So I had got a phone call, you know what I mean? So I decided to help Duty and through the process you know, the whole Harlem thing was getting hot and he had the music. He was ready when the time came because he was at my crib recording a lot of music. So he had a lot of music to put out and it was dope. So it all it all just, the stars aligned for, for, for duty. And, you know, he's, he got a lot of motion right now. So mm -hmm. shout out to him and what he's doing. Shout out to the whole Sugar Hill movement, um, D -Dot, um, DD. I wish them all the best, man. I mean, mm -hmm. they, 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 that's from, they actually from, my part of Harlem. So to see that and to hear everybody talking about them, I, I feel like, I'm like, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. That's super dope, man. 
I, so, I love it. I know and you I, had I, a I like, person. I like that. I like. I like that. I'm kind of like the the OG and that they know, look just, up to. Just, just, just trying to give them some some good energy. Like I said, yeah. chase the dream, man. You know, I know. I know a lot of that shit is is selling right now, the the, the, the drama. But you know, whatever y'all can stay, just try to stay away from the bullshit as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Basically, you ain't gotta go do the dumb shit. You know what I mean, especially now that y'all in a space to where you know y'all could kind of like move away from it and trying to you know what I mean better yourselves. Like you know, listen, if some shit happen and y'all run into a motherfucker and it, and it. You ain't got no choice but something to go another way and your life is in jet. Cool. But, you know what I'm saying? Don't chase a ghost, man. And that goes for both sides. You know what I'm saying? That's not just for duty side. That goes for their side, man. I mean, but I wish all them the best. They got to survive their 20s, man. I survived mine. I ain't getting into none of they shit. You know what I'm saying? Duty's my nephew. Duty signed up for the streets, though. I mean... My shit just like my papers is almost like expired. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? Them niggas, so they know they know. You think you there yet? I don't think. No, I don't mean like that. I mean niggas know what's up. We spank shit out here. Anybody, you know what I'm saying? Our shit's a different level of spanking though. Like this grown man spanking going on. Like you know what I'm saying? We not playing with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, mama's crib. Like so that's why it's like we. There's no need for none of that. We just live in life. We got families. There's no need. Nobody's doing nothing to me to where I would ever have to go there. So I'm cool. Mm-hmm. I'm not out doing nothing to nobody. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not looking for, you know, to go spin on a nigga's block, you know what I'm saying? Just making good music and trying to feed my family, trying to show these little niggas, let them live out their dreams. That's where I That's where I actually, I mean, yeah. really get the excitement and the joy from watching the youngest, my youngest, I mean, get right. And I know we got to go, but I, I, I will feel... We in motion coming soon. We in motion on the way. If I didn't ask you, I know like, Edot, Edot you was saying? very close. Yeah, R.I.P. I, 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 feel, I feel obligated to ask you, because yeah. I saw your Instagram post about oh, yeah. him, so how did that impact you? I mean, it was, it was hurtful just to see a young young up-and-coming star like that. And I mean, somebody had a lot going for itself, for a victim to what was going on in the streets. I don't know what the story was. I heard a lot of different, you know what I mean, things. I mean, I don't know what is still kind of like up in the air, you know what I mean? And really nothing for me to be talking about, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, R.I.P. Dot, you know what I'm saying? My love and condolences to his family, you know what I'm saying? All his friends, you know what I'm saying? And so when's the project? We in motion? We in motion. When, when, when we, can, when we, we get in that? Early. I'm looking for... um. I'm looking more like early March. I'm gonna, I'm gonna March. give it early March. I don't want to oh, give that's it. That's creeping up. Uh, it, it's no backing out of it. So for the for my fans <laughs> who may think, oh, nah, this this is this we in motion thing is like we are in fucking motion. The project is like done. You know what I'm saying we just rolling everything out, really getting people to understand that Jewel is about to drop an album. Mm. You know what I'm saying I ain't dropped an album in a long time, so. I mean, you can't just think you're going to make a post on Instagram and everybody's going to know you're going to drop an album just because you got, yeah. especially with the algorithm. So I'm just getting people back back in line, you know what I mean? Back back in line to understand who the fuck I am. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's just... I think they understand that. It's all falling into place. That. The stars is aligning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, th- thank you, man. Thank it's you for good. joining us thank here. Thank you for having me, man. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. It's Ken Capone News. Your boy, Art. Right. Well, Santana. We out this beer. All right. Peace. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.